static image and we've given it temporality, which one would imagine in some senses is not the thing you should do. But there again, what is Rembrandt doing? He's making a narrative which represents a single minute second of a time in his own particular narrative, so he's already implying the notions of temporality. This is meant to be a visual phenomenon and we've given it a soundtrack. What exactly are we doing there? What exactly is the notions of we were talking yesterday about Bernini, about the multimedia artist. Wouldn't Bernini would have been absolutely extraordinary if he'd also had electricity? Wouldn't Rembrandt also be amazing? Because I'm sure he would be a filmmaker if he was alive now. A very simple thing to say because they say that about Shakespeare, they say it about everybody, of course. That these guys would certainly have used the technology as indeed he did of his age and his time. So in a curious way, we have sort of done it for him. But I think that peculiar interface between painting, hitting right up against the cinema language, which had been predicated, I'm sure you've all seen Godard's Passion, where he did a sort of filmic essay about it, but by no means did he get, in some senses, to the nitty-gritty and the grips with the interchange of the two languages. A lot of people, of course, have thought what we've done is extremely vulgar, it's very kitsch, um, okay, they're welcome to that opinion. I think in a curious way that Rembrandt was a Hollywood painter anyway, so maybe there are certain justifications. And I wouldn't completely refute. 
I think part of their reaction is related to notions you know, of high art and public art, which I think we should gradually jump over. And kitsch, after all, is a very valid approach to notions of certain image making, which I think is perfectly legitimate. But I'm still not quite certain, and I know that art historians are out madly, madly writing their theses about it and really considering what we have done. Some people think we have overreached completely and created a situation where painting in a curious way can never be the same again. That sounds like a grand statement. But you can see the notions of a post-digital technology in an information age, the certain sorts of dangerous territory we've now moved in. As evidence of that, apart from our extremely eminent guest here, Wolfgang, who came to see it, we also had the director of the Prado in Madrid, who invited me to do something similar to Velázquez Las Meninas. We have the head of the Uffizi in Florence, who offered me a Raphael and a Della Francesca. <laughs> we have had the director of the Louvre, who wants, and I've always wanted to tackle Veronese's The Marriage of Cana, which hasn't got 34 people in it, it's got 68 people in it. <laughs> And my great ambition, and I thought this was really, really crazy, was to make uh, a version, again, reread, different agendas, but still basically using the same vocabulary, of Michelangelo's Last Judgment in the Vatican. Now that seems like an extraordinary dream. But think about morphic resonances in the zeitgeist. There is now in Italy a certain sort of cultural panic. Their tourist figures are going down. In the last three years, less and less people are visiting all the museum situations. And they've found by demographics that the people who aren't going anymore to Italian museums are not foreigners, but Italians. So there's now been instigated a huge program, for example, in Venice, which has a 50-year span, full of politicians, funders, financiers, bankers, architects, artists, to try and do something about their situation. I have just been appointed as their artistic curator to revitalize the notion of a consideration of this huge European heritage to be able to bring it in and make it relevant to things today. And one of the emissaries, and I met him in front of the night watch, I think two days before the whole thing finished, was the present Pope's cultural attaché. And he said, don't be too dispirited about the possibility of coming to the Vatican and maybe even doing the Sistine Chapel. <laughs> I finish. Any questions? <laughs>